Phillips. How's everything? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. First and foremost, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to chat with me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Sorry, it's kind of raining, so I apologize. It's all good. It's all good. Um, so the last area. time I actually saw you, it was October 10th, 2019, Game 5 WBA Finals, and you guys took home the big championship to D.C. Have you been really, during this time, able to soak that all in? Man, it's been so hard uh, because after we win, we all go overseas in the next week and a half to the two weeks. Um, then we're playing our overseas season. We come back. It's unknown if we're having the WNBA season because of the pandemic. So we're trying to, you know, just get through that. Mm -hmm. Then we have a second pandemic that's been going on for 400 plus years now. Uh, we have Breonna Taylor and George Floyd who are brutally murdered. We've had uh, people murdered after that. So it's been really hard to celebrate a championship. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, uh, I was unable to go to the ring ceremony too. So I haven't had my moment yet. I'm hoping that when I get the ring in the mail, I'm going to have my moment of, like, this is it. Uh, knowing me, I'll probably cry some thug tears, too. Well, I just want to congratulate you again on that major feat of becoming a WNBA champion. And hopefully when you do get your ring, you're able to celebrate in the proper way, considering the times that we're in now. But I want to um, dive into what you're doing off the court. I consider you a champion off the court. You know this. I tell you this all the time. <laughs> But the um, work that you've been doing off the court, <clears throat> as far as your advocacy and working with every town, um, and now you've opted out of the 2020 WNBA season. Um, how did you come to that decision? It was really hard. Uh, it was one of the hardest decisions I've made. Uh, obviously, I took on gun violence last year in Southeast DC, and not only Southeast DC, but it's a countrywide problem. Then we go into, again, these two pan pandemics and George Floyd is murdered. Breonna Taylor is murdered in her home. We have countless others who have been killed by police after the fact. We have people being hung in our country in 2020 mm -hmm. and not just people, but black men and women. Um, this directly affects me. And it's a beautiful thing that you see all that's involved with the movement right now. Um, there's so much momentum, there's so much leverage. There's so much support from our white counterparts that we haven't had before. And while people will get mad and be like, you should have been woke to it, I can't complain because y'all are here now. And right. so where do we move forward? And moving forward, uh, for me, being on the front lines was the most important thing. I can't do that from a bubble. You know, when, when we're in the bubble, when we're in the WNBA season, we're 100% committed to winning the championship. And so for me, it was impossible for me to give the – right amount of focus on both things from the bubble. So I chose to opt out. I chose to sit out so that I could be in the community, that I could be a face in the front lines, um, that I could continue to be a voice for the voiceless. And to much is given, much is required. And, you know, with that decision, you sacrificed your season pay. Um, it was forfeited. But Converse recently came out and said that they would cover your 2020 salary um, what does it oh. mean to not only be signed to a brand like Converse, but also to have them step up in that major way? Man, I, I cried for real. Like, I'm not even going to try to act tough. But like you said, going into opting out, it was either you play or you don't get paid. Mm -hmm. And so that was a, a big decision, too, is that I'm a provider for my family. You know, I just bought a home in February. Um, <laughs> am I going to be able to take zero dollars and really be like, okay. And money has never made the decision for me. So mm -hmm. I made the decision based off of my heart and with signing with a brand like Converse and being a family, they preach that to me from day one, but you know, people preach it all the time, but you know, you don't know, like, <laughs> is that really how y'all feeling? Like, is that the energy that y'all keeping? And from day one, from the jump, uh, Converse has been so good to me and so supportive of me and understanding that I am more than an athlete. Uh, I am an activist as well, uh, that this, but that our community truly means the world to me. And I want to be able to help and, and progress us and change uh, the cycle that we've been in for 400 plus years now. It's not going to be easy. I can't do it myself, but uh, to have that support from your sponsor, from your brand, when 
I've seen other counterparts, whether it is my sisters or my brothers or NFL players, get fired. They lose endorsements. They lose sponsorships for speaking up and, and doing what they believe in. And uh, to have that support from Converse is everything. Um, they really, they called me maybe a week after I opted out and they were like, we have a surprise for you. I'm like, what surprise y'all got for me? <laughs> y'all sending me more shoes? Like, and they were like, nah, we, we want to make sure that you and your family are good, that you're taken care of. You know, we made a promise to you that we would support you in every facet and that's what we're going to do. So they were like, we're going to pay your salary. Woo, did them tears start flowing, okay? <laughs> love it, love it. <laughs> blessings, blessings. One of the things that just stood out to me that you just said is like um, seeing other players in different leagues stand up as well. Um, obviously, the news broke um, within the last few weeks that uh, the huge victory from Maya Moore, seeing how she um, uh, like sacrificed the seasons of her career and seeing that major victory. What does that victory mean to you? Just seeing how successful Maya Moore was in her efforts. I mean, it gives me hope because it, it, it can be really hard um, I've never been this exhausted in my life and I've played mm -hmm. at the highest level of basketball um, for all my life. I've never been this exhausted. So it gives you hope seeing the work that she's done, uh, understanding that she set out last season and um, it took up until this season to free him. Mm -hmm. Like she put in so much work. I can imagine how exhausted she was, how, um, how she could have been kind of intimidated by the whole system thing it gives me so much hope that even if there's obstacles, even if there's roadblocks in my way with going through this and uh, I'm on a bit of a learning curve because this, you know, this is new to me and I'm trying to do things the right way, but um, I have examples and I have role models ahead of me that are doing the right things. And man, Maya, I can't speak highly enough about her. I uh, was a huge fan girl. I can remember the first game that I ever played against her and being like, you are everything, like you are the GOAT, mm -hmm. but this surpasses anything she ever did on the court. Any accolade that she ever, you know, got from being on the court, this surpasses it because you are a GOAT in life and you're doing the right things for your community and, and to step away and walk away from the game at the moment that she did, that's, that's huge. That's strength. That's, that's power. And so mm -hmm. it's a blessing to have her as an example for us. It's so interesting that you just said that you're new to this because I feel like most of your career, you've always been in the front line speaking out, using your platform and your voice, um, leading media blackouts last season, <laughs> uh, uh, the mayor of DC um, in terms of what happened at Henley um, Elementary School. So it's interesting that you're saying that you're new to this. I feel like it's just your role and your leadership is just evolving in a sense, but you've always been one to to do the work and, and really put action behind your words. I appreciate you for that. Cause <laughs> for me, my mom just likes to say I have a big mouth. <laughs> and so for me, I've just always been that person that spoke up when something was wrong and it didn't sit well with me. I, I've never been scared to use my voice, but if you would have asked me even last year with the gun violence in, in, in Henley elementary school, if I was an activist, I'd be like, no, I'm just a normal person that knows when like stuff is messed up. Like, Three bullets penetrate a building in a single month, one in which the children were in the building. Why is there nothing being done? Like, to me, it's not rocket science. This is simple. And, you know, but I, I love how you say that I've kind of evolved and um, I'm growing and I'm trying to figure out and, you know, figuring out how to try and attack systemic racism, oppression, police brutality, wage gap, gender equity. I mean, it's intimidating when you're looking at it as a whole. So. Um, something that, you know, me and Renee Montgomery talked about is, okay, what are low hanging fruits mm -hmm. that we can grab and that we can have immediate impact on? And so for, um, for me, for Converse, uh, for our Mystics family joining with the Wizards, uh, voting is our first initiative in this okay. uh, because we need someone that is fit to run our country. And that's the nicest way that I could say it. <laughs> Well, I truly appreciate the work that you're doing both on and off the court. Um, Renee was just on last week and I had a chance to speak to her. Oh, and talk about, yes, the, I mean, both of you are amazing human beings, but she was talking about the importance of education reform. Um, and then just, I just want you to touch on your personal experience as far as um, your encounter with the police. I just read an article that you did uh, 
they did on you a week ago, and you talked about your personal encounter with the police in relation to racial bias. Um, can you talk about that situation and how it helped shift um, how you feel now? Yeah, it, um, it scared me. I've had multiple encounters with police, whether it's in my hometown. Uh, for those that don't know, I grew up in an all-white family. I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood. So me having a car of my own, driving through, you know, I got pulled over a countless amount of times in high school, but nothing scared me more than the time that I got pulled over. It was before last season. Um, I was shooting late at ESA, which is our arena in Southeast DC. I was driving home. I was maybe a block away from home. It was probably like 1.30 in the morning. I'm a late night shooter. I like to work out late night. <laughs> um, and I got pulled over. And so uh, immediately, like, I'm on the phone. I'm like, listen, I'm getting pulled over. I need you to stay on the phone. I think I was on with my parents, actually. Mm -hmm. um, can you stay on the phone with me? And I did everything my mom told me to do. You put your hands at 10 and 2 on the wheel. You don't remove them. If you remove them, you ask for permission to remove them. You meet them with respect. You, you adhere to everything that they're asking you to do because one false move could be it for you. And right. that's my white mother understanding of what the world is that I will live in as a mixed race uh, baby. I could see the cop in my rear view or my side view mirror approaching my car and he was approaching it sideways with his hand hovering his gun. Wow. And I'm like, I'm going to die. Like this, this is it. You're going to see me all over the news. Like, and I can remember being like, I'm going to fucking die. I'm going to fucking die. like, mm -hmm. and my mom's like, calm down, calm down. Like, just relax and so he came up and he was just this white man he was a white police officer and approached me aggressively like yelling at me roll down on your windows I'm like I am the only one in my car I'm reaching for my window buttons can I reach for my window buttons gives me permission I roll down all my windows sir I'm coming from shooting I'm a mystics player I'm literally a block away from my apartment right. I was just getting shots up I'm on my way home there was no one else in the car with me I am a 27 year old female. You are the biggest threat to me right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not a threat to you. You are a threat to me. And so after he saw that no one was in my car, he asked for my license and registration. I asked to, you know, reach for it. Um, he allowed me to, he went back to his car. They gave me like, um, he gave me a ticket for my tent. And so like I went in, I purposely went into the hearing for it because I wanted to go in and fight my ticket. I was, I was hoping that I wouldn't have to pay. I was hoping he wouldn't show up, so I wouldn't have to pay it. But he showed up. But I was actually glad because I had a minority judge. I told her how he approached me. I explained everything, um, the same as I'm explaining to you. I'm a 27-year-old female by herself, but I'm being judged because of my skin and because of the car that I'm driving. Right. And you approached me as a threat when you didn't even give me a chance. Like, I didn't even have a chance. And so she kind of reamed him out, which I was really happy about. Um, I had to get rid of my tent, which I was really mad about. But it, like I was saying to them, the tent protects me too. Like I, I'm driving by myself at nighttime. I'm a female. Like if they see tent in my car, they're going to be like, oh, that, that's a man in there. That's a nice car, <laughs> a nice sports car. Yeah. Um, but no, it was scary. And just speaking to that experience, um, the WNBA, uh, they recently announced the launch of new initiatives, including the Justice Council. Um, have they talked to you about being involved with that? No, I haven't heard from them yet. I know they're in the, the midst of, you know, being in the bubble and figuring things out. And um, they have a really good group, uh, the council. They have a really, really good group. And obviously, I played with Tierra Ruff and Pratt. She's been directly affected. Her family has been di directly affected from police brutality, from a police murder, mm -hmm. uh, from gun violence. Uh, so I know they're in really good hands because they have someone that it directly affected. And um, the rest of the, the, the council, they're just really good people, really smart, um, just very woke and passionate about it. So um, whatever W needs me in any facet, I'm, I'm here for it. Just because I opted out doesn't mean that that's not my family still. Um, you know, right. I'm still rooting for the Mystics to win a back-to-back. Uh, I'm still going to be watching all the games. Um, it's just that that wasn't the path that God chose for me this season. And I just want to quickly touch on um, 
the family aspect of the WNBA this week, the players really stood together um, and agreeing that um, they wanted to uh, seek the removal. She got to go. Atlanta Dream Call Order, Kelly Loeffler. Um, all the players are applying pressure um, on the league to either sanction or remove her. Aaron Davis has come out and said that he actually wants to buy her interest in the team. Help me yes. understand that. And what are the players talking about this week in regards to that? We've been talking. Um, we're disgusted. Mm-hmm. We're hurt. We're we're angry because we're being used right now as puppets by Kelly. Mm-hmm. She's using us for political gain. That's her. That's her whole point behind this is to uh, gain more support from her conservative counterparts. Right. And she's utilizing our league to do so. But in the meantime. I don't think she understands the hurt and the damage that she's placing on our league that is 80% filled with black women. Mm-hmm. This directly affects us. Your team in Atlanta is majority of black women. This directly affects them. Your starting five is black. That directly affects them. And so for us, it's a thing of you can't, why do you want to be a co-owner? You don't support Black Lives Matter. You don't support LGBTQ plus rights you don't support us using our voices. You are just really expecting us to be athletes and that's it. You're essentially telling us to shut up and dribble. Mm -hmm. And so I was met with, well, she has her first amendment, right? She absolutely does. Absolutely does. That's a great part of America. You can have your opinions. You can say what you want to say, but you don't align with us. So leave and allow other people who support us, not only on the court, but off the court, invest in our league. Let an ex-NBA player invest in the team. He wants to partially own it. Let him. That gives other NBA players incentive to invest in our league. You're hurting us. You're not helping us. You're using us. And in the meantime, you're, like I said, you're only hurting us because there's so much that can come from this opportunity of NBA players stepping up, of other, you know, uh, companies or people stepping up and putting their money in because they support us and they support us using our platforms and being a voice for the voiceless. It definitely um, is amazing to see the NBA family and the WNBA family come together on that forefront. Um, moving forward, what are the next steps? Real change, like laws changing, defunding uh, the police. And people, when I say that, they're like, oh, you want to disband the police? No, there's a <laughs> spectrum to it because there is probably a lot of people out here that want to disband police because of how wrong they've been doing our community. But what I'm saying is that there's no reason that some of these police departments are getting 20 plus million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Take some of that money out and allocate it into our communities, into our marginalized communities, whether it's hospitals, schools, food, our homeless, our domestic abuse uh, victims, put it elsewhere. Because those are the the places that we've been taking money out for years and instead putting into our police departments. And that's got to change. So I'm not saying disband them because we do need our good police officers, the good ones. You need to start (laughs) shifting out whoever these, you know, supremacists are that are wearing a badge and hiding behind it. Uh, but we can allocate that money elsewhere. And so what needs to happen next is what are those low hanging fruits that we can make immediate impact on like Louisville and and Brianna's law. Mm -hmm. First of all, arrest her killers. Yes. Arrest them because y'all making a law on her name, but you haven't arrested the, the three officers that murdered her in her home. Right. But there should have never been a no knock warrant. There should there that's um, that's most, against our rights. The roots, the roots of the issues is starting there and and reforming and making change at the root of the problem. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, and and so that's my hope is that we can we can start making changes and we really need to make a change in our leadership and I want to put it out there. Do not vote for Kanye. My <laughs> my generation and the generation below, do not vote for that fool. Because you are voting for Trump. You vote for Kanye, you are voting for Trump. And while I don't think Biden is a fit candidate either, we have to pick the lesser of evil. Mm-hmm. And we did not do that last term. Right. We need to do it this term. And don't be fooled. Kanye ain't for black people. We know that. <laughs> 
When we know like, oh, that. Thinking about black people, it's Kanye West, is it? <laughs> Shoot, right? Slavery was a choice. Yeah, very problematic. This man wearing Confederate flags on his jacket. Stop playing with me, y'all. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you so much, Natasha, for um, joining me today on Kicking It with Christina. It's been a pleasure to kick Absolutely. it with you, to catch up on everything that you're working on. Um, and I look forward to seeing some of the initiatives that yourself and Converse join together um, to put forth in. You. you have my support completely. Girl, you got mine. We also <laughs> have to remember to support uh, y'all as well our black sisters that have have put themselves out there to support us this whole time in the W. So uh, know that y'all are appreciated, that we know who you are. We see you and we appreciate everything that y'all doing. Man, that means so much coming from you. Um, Absolutely. We'll chat, we'll chat soon. So thank you so much. Absolutely. I appreciate you. <laughs>